Jackie Boyer here with uh, C Money from Slightly Stupid. We're here on behalf of Philly Normal, Lancaster Normal, and the Panic Hour today. Yeah. So, what are your what are your opinions on marijuana legalization? All for it. Um, you know, I, I like to be like very direct with it. That um, you can argue it's first of all an agricultural product. That you know, for all intents and purposes, I think that the medical research involved has proven its um, relative safety amongst things like alcohol and now with the prescription flux of prescription medicine prescribed to even underage children such as Ritalin, Zoloft, Xanax, you know, all of the above, which are very detrimental to young developing livers. But way beyond that, um, you know, alcohol was once illegal in this country. This country right now, and I'm in every city in it, um, has an infrastructure because America was once great. There were factories on every corner, and there were jobs. There was a lot of self-owned business people and things that we could do. And our farms were more medium-sized, diversified farms who sold a number of goods, not just one thing. We were just more in tune. And now we can't argue that technology has gotten us away from things of where we're at, and now. Our health is bad, you know, with an obesity problem. We have a problem with buying, I don't really particularly like buying lettuce that's from Brazil, you know what I mean? Yeah. I love Brazil, I have many Brazilian friends, but I'll only eat Brazilian lettuce when I'm in Brazil. You see what I'm saying? And the best marijuana that is grown in the world is grown in America. And America is based on a society that is of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that if, as long as I'm paying my taxes and I can create an industry where taxation would be greatly, you know, it would, we would generate so much tax money, it's not even funny. Look up the actual times that alcohol is taxed from the time it's manufactured to the time it's sold. We're talking the grains, transportation of those grains, the ingredients, the transportation of the final product, transportation of the labels used in that product, I mean, all of that involved, we would create in a, a, a mirrored image of an industry without any of the physical addiction. Yes. Oh, yeah. Plus the medical element where it does have a medical purpose, but so does ether. But you know, I think any American that's over the age of 21 or 18 or whatever the states so choose should be able to purchase and have on them marijuana. They should be able to grow it. I can make wine yeah. as long as I'm not trying to sell it to you. See, that's where the ATF comes in. That's where you just need to be knowledge of your laws. That's my one thing that I criticize the youth. We spend so much time on this Facebook and all this crap talking about our own emotions and we don't use it to actually communicate information. Certain people do, but most of those people are blown off on a social media because they're not the cool kids on the block. But it's time for the cool kids to recognize that the power is in our hands and it's slipping. But yet, I feel like we're at a time of renaissance right now. You know, we're in a time when medical marijuana is kicking the door open, we're showing that dispensaries that are ready to pay $20,000 in taxes every three months shouldn't be a problem to anyone, you know what I mean? Especially not because you're talking in a world where meth is, you know, breaking the world apart. I'm looking on the newspaper and this TV series, Breaking Bad, is so coveted in our society yeah. that no one is going, hey, isn't it kind of weird that we're like all wanting to just put all of our energy into meth? Something that really is ripping this country down to its core and, and then beyond, flushing it right down the toilet. And yet we're like, oh, this guy's so cool, you know. Yes, he's an outlaw. Yes, he's getting money. But look at the situation. The guy's got cancer and he can't afford treatment. Well, hello, the medical marijuana industry is ready to give billions of dollars to the United States of America. The people are ready to pay the taxes. Roll the hell over and let this happen before we get angry and burn some stuff down. Because that's the American way. I mean, it's true. That's why I got this tattoo. This is an old revolutionary symbol. And when I got busted coming back from the cannabis cup with a half a gram of hash that was just accidentally in my bag, which I was ready to even say that was a mistake, it wasn't even like a moral issue. It was pay $1,200 and make your connecting flight. And it really, 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 it affected me in such a way that every American needs to know what's up. The whole thing with alcohol was a money game. Yeah. Guys like Al Capone proved that there was millions of dollars being made in the booze game. There were judges involved, lawyers involved, doctors involved, police involved. You know what? They're all involved in the marijuana industry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
And I, you know what, I mean, it's not like I had all this pre-recorded, but this is my life. My dad is a disabled vet of the Vietnam War. He smokes marijuana every day. He has diabetes. He's been arrested several times. I had to watch him get hauled off. And as a taxpayer, as a hardworking veteran of this country, for what? When that time could have been spent hunting down some meth lab, or some child molester, or some rapist, or some killer. Oh, we need yeah. to get our priorities in straight, and we need to recognize, though, that the power is in the people. They will really do what we tell them to do. We need to stop acting scared and just get our little, you know, cojones up and say, let's just fight this with a pen, with our laws, with knowledge. Yeah. That's what they do to us. That's what the Patriot Act was. It was a bunch of lawyers and a bunch of mumbo jumbo. Let's mumbo jumbo them back and say we don't want it. We reject it. Yeah. The Congress had such change. This, or y'all don't have a job anymore. See how that's supposed to work? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. And all that taxes and so much good stuff. Good things. Oh, the government came after me for 20 G's. Like I'm the big bad guy, you know. And the way that they came at me, it involved more money than that in, in the pursuit of me. And again, like one hand doesn't even know what the other hand is doing because they even double reported me because my name is spelled wrong. I mean, just look at the system, it's so it's flawed in many ways. We are like, uh, let's just legalize some earth. <laughs> you know, like if, just because I want to bring this to the table, I'm a bad guy or I'm shunned upon or I'm a, a lackadaisical person who's a drug addict. When the alcohol industry, hello, have you ever met an alcoholic? Yeah. That shit is evil and they run the whole gamut. They run the politicians, they run the music, they run the rate, the sports, they run everything. They, because they have money. Why? Because alcohol is ingrained. But yet it was once illegal. Hell, when our grandparents were little kids, the Constitution was changed twice. Let's just do that again. The states all come together, change that Constitution, get it federally legalized, and literally watch it happen. Yeah. I don't want to overstate the point, but I hope that that makes yeah. sense. So we heard from uh, some of the people backstage that you've actually had a few booths for uh, the shows, a few normal booths, and um, so we were just wondering when the first time was that you actually heard of the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. It's a sticker on my father's file cabinet. So I've been hearing about normal since way before I even smoked marijuana. Um, and I knew that the organization had a history and been around since the hippies, which for even, you know, they needed to do what they did to shake up the pot. But it's our responsibility now to take the society over and to fill the roles, be the senators, be the, the politicians, change what needs to be changed in light of what our parents sacrificed. You know, they, they, they did a lot by tearing down the system, but then they kind of left it like, oh no, what do we do? And that's our job. I'm not going to default them because they did their role. And you have to look at it in the big picture. In a way, our grandparents did their role in, with the whole alcohol game. That's again, I don't, you have to use that as an example because the Constitution was changed once, alcohol was made illegal. Then they were like, this is a really bad idea 10 years later, and it was changed again. But you see how that involvement with the people, the changing of all that, that is like very important. We tend to sit back and go, everything's set in stone and I can't change anything. That's crap. Get that out of your head. That's the first thing that needs to get shook up out of everybody's head. You know that, okay, with us actively saying, I want this, we don't get it. I want to see it go beyond the medical thing. I want it to be like beer. I want it to be fully... But also medical. You can have the Marinol, you can have all the products, the hash, the oils, the edibles, all of that will have its place. But also the hardworking carpenter wants to come home and buy an aid and then go run and chase his kids around the yard instead of drinking a six pack of beer and sitting in front of the TV. Amen! <laughs> so my dad would get high and he'd become Tickle Monster. You know, my mom would get drunk and be like, ah, you know, you're like, whoa, what happened? To What's your favorite way to smoke? Okay. I like a bong, like a nice clean bong. I can actually prefer when it's slightly stupid. We like to really just clean out a nice glass on glass. Uh, I find it's a little more the California way. Uh, I'm from yeah. the East Coast originally, but uh, you know I live in Cali now, and I love the herb that's out there. You know I get the Tokyo G is my personal favorite, and uh, it just that you know with some maybe some ice in it in the morning, a little cup of coffee. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's pretty much it. You say you got glass. What's your favorite? You got a favorite glass company? Favorite artist? Um, Goat Glass actually has been really, really good to us. Uh, my boss, Miles, lead singer, one of the lead singers, he um, is really smart about how he wants the bongs to be like a down stem at this certain angle yeah. and at this length and this percolator, this how many inches above the bottom and. I mean, think about the wine industry. People drink certain glasses of wine. You know, it's all, yeah, yeah, but, dude. That's all there with the herb, and that's all money people can make. They're like, oh, I make these type of bongs. I make, you know, a dab piece. I make this. You know, and right now our favorite is called a Captain Kirk because oh. on the road it's hard to get like a torch in the whole nine yards. So we just end up taking our dabs and putting them on top of a bowl. But if you have any type of herb, like a keef and a hash, any other type of, basically three things together is a Captain Kirk. You're about to boldly go where no one has ever gone before. Hopefully. And then if there's four things, that's called a, a wrong one, just because we're being stoner nerds. Sure. <laughs> so, uh, who would you say within the band is the biggest stoner? Not necessarily smokes the most, but you know, has the bunchies the most, the biggest, like. That'd be our keyboard player, Paul, <laughs> for sure. No hesitation on that answer. Yeah, no, he, he's like a cartoon character. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>